Ladies and gentlemen, I have probably about the most special video ever here because I am joined by the GOAT himself, the boy Cybertron VGC. Aaron, thank you very much. I appreciate you being here, bro. Dude, it is such an honor. I was telling you, you know, before we started making the video, but I've been watching your stuff for years and it makes me really excited to see you dip your toes into VGC as well. So yeah, this is an honor for me as well. Thanks for having me. Dude, it's so crazy. I don't, honestly, I don't watch a lot of like Pokemon content. I just have a hard time like finding time. I don't know, but Aaron's channel is definitely one of them that I feel like pretty much everything I know about VGC comes from this dude's video. So we got the, we got the crossover episode where I'm going to be hopping in some matches with this. Uh, this is a rental team that uh, my dude was using a little bit. I, I messed around with it, you know, in a few games, but I think it could be kind of interesting to see if I could get a little, little extra help. Because of course, I'm new to VGC. I'm a singles player, and it's completely different. But you know, I'm getting into it, so I think it could be, it's gonna be fun. I'm probably not gonna do great, but <laughs> it's fine. I always tell people, you know, like VGC is such a hard game. Like I lose all the time, right? And uh, especially because like. There's so many different components to it. The team in itself is a big component, the battling, you know, just your mental ability to perform as well. And so for, for me, I'm like, yeah, losing is just a part of Pokemon. And I, I think if you fall in love with the process of learning to how to win, but also how to lose and like how to, how to analyze your losses, I think it's a great skill. And yeah, you know, it's, there's nothing wrong with losing, especially when you're starting out and, and playing the game because that's how you can really improve rapidly. Yeah, it seems like, I mean, in all like, all ways of Pokemon. I think the only way to get better is literally just experience. And like, especially in VGC, I think it's more important to kind of have, have the experience of knowing what, you know, people are, are running. You often go up against, you know, very similar Pokemon here. So I feel like just the experience of, even if you find out matchups that do not work well for your team, you can obviously take that into the next games and stuff. So it's all about, it's all about experience. And I've got, you know, I actually just hit master ball ranks. <laughs> so heck you know, yeah, man. Congratulations. I'm kind of a big deal, you know? <laughs> No, it, honest, honestly, it is a big accomplishment. I, I think, like, you know, in, especially with ranked, right? Everyone has different goals, but to get to Master Ball, it's like you you have to have some level of consistency and understanding of the game. Um, and yeah, I, I think like regardless of what your rank is, once you're at Master Ball, it's 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 really cool. And especially in Scarlet and Violet, like I've seen so many new players be like, oh, I finally hit Master Ball, like my first time playing ranked or first time getting there while playing ranked. And I think that's awesome, you know. Absolutely. And so. I think if you get there you at least have solid fundamentals and that's that's a really key skill in the game yeah plus what's nice about how early it is i mean we're only like a month and a half into it so like you know everybody's relatively new so it's a good time to jump into if you haven't gotten into vgc if you're more of a singles player a lot of the people on my channel probably subscribe for single stuff but you know i feel like going with the official format is always it's always fun and it's nice to switch things up a little bit so um today we've got a team yeah so we're, we're looking at the team preview here essentially this is a team based around uh, kind of annihilate right a lot of people are running with i think scarf kind of final gambit sets but this one takes advantage of maybe throwing people a little bit off guard with like a bulk up kind of drain punch set for sustainability pair that with the grim snarl and screens and this boy is like untouchable especially with that water terra um so i think that's kind of like the main mode of this team and then there's just some some decent support in the back like uh, Rocky Helmet Corviknight, you can switch that into, it's actually hilarious watching a mouse hold kill itself when it yeah. uses. <laughs> totally, <Spider -Man>. totally. <laughs> um, it's so funny. But yeah, then there's like, there's offensive Rotom where I often, I find out, I wish that this thing had Will-O-Wisp, but of course we're using a rental team. All of the uh, information about the team builder is in the description. The team ID is up there if you want to try this out for yourself. Um, but yeah, then we got like an offensive Gengar with Focus Ash, which is extremely valuable. I found that this thing is ex like super nice because fairies uh, are obviously pretty scary for this team. And with, you know, that Gengar special attack, not much is living a sludge bomb. Uh, and then this is Swords Dance Garchomp, which I haven't gotten to really try too much. So maybe we'll, we'll test that bad boy out today. But let's go ahead and jump into, into some matches. So that's the team we're using. Um, I'm not super familiar with the team yet, but let's get ourselves into some ranked battles and see if uh, with the power of we've got the Cybertron in the back. So, I mean, these people don't even know what's about to hit them for real. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, yeah, you know, the, the team you're using, it was built by uh, a really good Japanese player who actually like got to rank number one on the ladder, like in the, the opening days. Um, and it's just really consistent. You know, I think like like clay grimstar was something that picked up a lot throughout sword and shield in vgc and it's like yeah eight turns of reflect and light screen is just kind of wild and then this team just has like a lot of potential setup you know like setup naturally is common in vgc maybe not to the extent of singles where you fully expect to sweep with one pokemon but there's so many good pokemon that get like good setup moves right yeah absolutely dude the grim snarl is so is so good i i've, I've always liked grim snarl in vgc um anyway we got our first match here against lusamine herself <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, I honestly, what I struggle with most is finding like what Pokemon to bring after the initial kind of like mode, right? So, here yeah. I'm thinking, I mean, we probably want to bring Corviknight from Mousehold. Um, 
other than that, I mean, Serral Edge is kind of scary, but if we just go straight for Water Terror on this thing, I'm gonna just build up some Rage Fist. I probably even just probably go Grim Snarl, Ape, and then it's like, what do I bring in the back, right? So, mm -hmm. it's it's so tough for me to try to figure out what I want here. Yeah, we don't have that much time left. I can like kind of walk you through how I would think about it. Like, yeah. I kind of eliminated from what Pokemon do I not want to bring, and so like. Like True. Rotom Wash, for example, and Garchomp, I'm a little bit less inclined in this matchup because like Garchomp doesn't have Dragon Claw, right? We're only using EQ and Rock Slide. True, that is one um, thing I noticed, so like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so it's like, well, I could bring it maybe for the Seru Ledge. That's basically it. They have potential Intimidate. I mean, I guess we have the Clear Amulet, actually, so that would block Intimidate. But oh, true. point being, it's like Garchomp's not really one-shotting things with Earthquake or Rock Slide. And then Rotom is like interesting here. I mean, we do have Fire Terra for Serena, but it's like, oh, I don't love that. And then like Hydro Pump, not really that great damage other than into Sarah Ledge. You would you could bring it as an argument actually for Sarah Ledge, like you consider dropping Corviknight for it, but I think the four that we've locked in here are fine. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm pop in with these four and see how it goes. So my plan initially, I'm thinking they, may, they might even, it, Mouse Hold is an interesting Pokemon, right? Cause it can be just full out offensive, but then you can also see sets that are, do they do follow me and like things like Encore and like they can really just kind of disrupt if you don't expect that. Uh, exactly yeah i think like i oh i when i play against it i always expect you know population bomb obviously but then like encore follow me protect um you know those are the moves that i normally associate with it as well yeah so what's crazy is like when i see something like gardevoir which i haven't seen in vgc like what is this thing what is this thing gonna do to me um it's scary i feel like i probably want to go with a reflect just because of mouse hold i could even swap annihilate into corvanite here if i expect the population bomb into that but then if that read doesn't happen then i feel like i'm in a bad position um I almost want to just reflect and drain punch into mouse hold, what do you think? Yeah, I think the scary thing is Gardevoir is the potential to one-shot you with like a psychic type attack. Like you could set up True. light screen in order to maybe survive then, or you could Terra. Yeah, like I think I I think I'm gonna tear yeah, I think I'll Terra Drain Punch into Mouse Hold. I just do not know what Gardevoir is gonna do. Is Gardevoir just generally an offensive mon here? I would like... yeah, when I see it, I would expect like, you know, a psychic type attack like Psychic or Psy Shock, um, Moonblast, Dazzling Gleam. It gets access to Trick Room as well. So when I see it, I expect either like a choice card variant. Um it actually it gets trick as well, which is kind of fun. Uh, or kind of like a more bulky support trick room oriented one. But um, nice. your opponent's team, I expect it to be a little bit more offensive. So let's see. Yeah, so I reflect here just because I'm I feel like I'm more afraid of Population bump, but then like you said, a dazzling gleam hurts Grimmsnarl. Oh my! Does... They actually made the read. Wow, he does population bomb into that. Wow, he expects <laughs> the Terra. Oh that no! That is. Oh that's no! Actually, that's wild. So dang. All right, so the Corviknight switch into that would have been actually insane. <laughs> Damn. Oh, and then he just Moonblast probably into... No! <laughs> Takes care of the Annihilate turn one. Yeah, so I think basically your opponent there was like, I'm going to hedge for like... If you if you don't Terra, I just get the Moonblast off and maybe expect that to KO, especially if I don't know, it's like Choice Specs, for example. Um, that was that was, a, that was honestly a really impressive play by them, though. Wow. <laughs> like... they, yeah, wow. Okay, all right. Well, it's getting real. Maybe I probably go Corviknight here just because that kind of renders Mousehold not super useful. Yeah, it's interesting. I think like you could one one thing you could do is like go into Gengar, bait the population bomb in a Grim, and then like switch Grim Snarl into Corviknight, try to like let them self KO. Yeah, and then try to use Gengar to KO uh, Gardevoir. But I mean, they could of course go for Follow Me here. But honestly, like that was a that was a really impressive play by your opponent on turn one. So <laughs> was I wouldn't feel too bad about losing to something like that. You know, the normal type move into the Ghost type was crazy. But now I feel yeah, like exactly. I'm, I'm pretty far behind because I've obviously I've used my Terra at this point. And I think I probably just Light Screen. And sludge yeah, bomb. I think you could consider oh, light screening or switching out into Corviknight. Out, like, yeah. yeah, maybe like try to get them to self KO themselves, and then Gengar gets a big hit off in a Gardevoir. And since we have Focus Ash, we know we can at least survive for a turn here. True. Yeah, I feel like at this um, point, playing from behind, you kind of have to try to make a read to try to make something happen. So, Population Bomb's interesting into the Grim Snarl slot because he could just go Moonblast into there as well. But I feel like it's still worth to go into Corviknight. If we can catch this Population Bomb, we would love to see it. Oh, it just followed me. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, this is on, this is great play by them, honestly. So kudos to them. Um, yeah, this mouse hold is going hard, and now psychic knocks me to sash. Um, so this kind of puts me weird because Gengar will go first into the follow me on mouse hold, um, and then Gengar is gone. I might even. Hmm. It's interesting. I could I could. He probably won't go for the fairy move into the Gengar slot, so I can't really go in, back into into the Grim Snarl on the mm -hmm. Gengar slot. So I probably just. Man, I probably just have to like Iron Head try to get this slot. Mm -hmm. And he's probably just gonna follow me and I guess just sludge bomb. Hmm. Either way, yeah. Mousehold goes down here and then Gardevoir is gonna take a pretty big Iron Head. So I think that's 
probably what I'll do. I mean, I'd obviously just click Sludge Bomb into that slot, even if, if they're going to follow me, which they do. Yep. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, it covers for them making a weird, like, mouse hold protect play. Yeah, true. Okay, so follow me is, like, the most overpowered move ever. <laughs> it's, it's no fair. It's, that it's is, crazy. Like, yeah, though. like, the, the fact that mouse hold can be, like, a population bomb set, um, like, with wide lens and then also a follow me is just like a crazy combo <laughs> seriously you just do not know what to expect from that thing so he does go for moon, moon blast just to cover for the grim smile switch there and iron head actually that's sashed? that sashed the crit yeah too. it's gotta be <laughs> that is yeah. really interesting yeah the sash garbage. so yeah like sash i wouldn't be surprised if they had sash plus trick room so they could like flex the potential of trick room if they needed to true interesting well this is funny because this is like the a combo that i have not seen to start like in the beginning of a match so now we're in a pretty weird situation against the freaking Sarah Ledge. Um, I probably just, I probably just light screen. Hmm. I don't know if I. Yeah, I think it's Sarah tough Ledge. without like knowing what Terra it is. Like I think one thing you could consider is like you do have Thunder Wave, so I would maybe at this point just considering like Sarah Ledge is scary. Gardevoir is not as scary. Um, and yeah, try to paralyze Sarah Ledge and then also just KO it because at least Corviknight walls it. But honestly, this game was really hard to win after turn one. Like yeah, your opponent turn just one made a really, really good insane. play. <laughs> if we yeah, can get yeah, honestly. a Terra here, that would actually be kind of nice. He doesn't Terra, which is interesting. What are you seeing generally on Sarah Ledge? Is it like Grass Terra? Like I've seen Grass Terras to Grass Terra. Yeah, like Grass Terra with like Bulk Up, for example, um, Bitter Blade, um, Shadow Sneak, yeah. and then like a fourth. Yeah. That is quite bulky. Man, I mean, I probably should have. You know, he does oh. get the pair. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so at least, you know, we're not going down without a fight. But this turn, yeah, like yeah. you said, that turn one was kind of ridiculous. Who, who population yeah, bombs into an Annihilate? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's it's a good play by your opponent because essentially they were covering for Terra, but they were like, also, if you don't Terra, yeah, the mouse hole doesn't get the attack off, but Gardevoir still moon blasts you, and that's super effective, right? Yeah. So true. it was one of those where it's like not 100% fully predicting, um, but they just, yeah, it looked really strong from there, obviously, after after the turn one played out. Um, yeah, true. It was, just, it was just a job well done, like to cover for that option. Very smart. Yeah, that's what's interesting about VGC is like you can truly get so much momentum from like a good turn one read that like the game is almost like kind of one at that point totally yeah i think here i'd paralyze gardevoir um and just to slow it down for the turn True. um yeah the prankster gives up a pair of chance the prankster para is extremely nice yeah exactly now we're faster it's one of those where it's like well you know we're not going to be able to really deal that much damage they can at least hope for some paras you know back to back oh here. the crit oh! wait hold on hold on hold up this <laughs> hold game on. actually <laughs> could be one hold up <laughs> para one time for the boys come on para for the boys Yes! Let's oh, go. <laughs> oh my god, I feel See, bad. See, this is why you don't give up, man. You gotta, no matter how slim the odds are. <laughs> Seriously, it's, it, it is still oh, It is Rotom, though. Pokemon. Okay, okay. Oh, I don't no, know about this one. Oh, damn it. Yeah, it's the Rotom. Okay, we well, got yeah, T-Wave <laughs> kills. But, I mean, hey, we brought it, <laughs> I brought it back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, well, there's pretty much... Yeah, if, it, if that wasn't Rotom, if that was something like... Like Salamence in the back, or Serena, then we would have been... In, Wow, Salamence Serena, we would have been solid, but yeah, the Rotom probably just to cover for the. I think it's still board. potentially doable. So yeah, like here at KO Gardevoir, so that um, yeah, they can't yeah, and then like you could set up light screen here because we haven't set that up yet. Yeah, try and to basically light screen. Because the Corviknight on this team is actually fast, and so there's a chance that we outspeed the Rotom right now if they don't have much speed investment. True. Oh, we do. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Okay. So Gardevoir down. So. Wow, this actually turned into a match there with a couple bear eggs. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's why that's, I love like, Grimstone. can really bail you out. Okay, so yeah, they're smart on target actually... Grim. Yeah. Good play. Yeah, because then... That, that makes it tough because uh, Rotom kind of just walls Corbin. I, like, we basically have to like try to flinch them a cabillion times with Iron Head. <laughs> Give me like nine Iron Head flinches in a row. <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's fine. We didn't. I didn't deserve to win that. Anyway, actually, he's going to go for the Terry. Maybe... Okay, so now we get neutral Iron Head if it's something that's not... I mean, Wait, I hold on, yeah, what are, they, what are they tearing into? Why would you... Oh, oh okay. okay. Interesting. I mean, yeah, now you just get extra stab for T-Bolt, which behind the light screen, I probably can't take more than two anyway. But give me a flinch and yeah. then ten more. <laughs> okay, we're doing so little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. Hey, that was actually... That turned into an interesting game, so I'll take it. And that just kills me with the terror. I think, no, like, one, your opponent played really well. That was a crowd. I was thinking maybe we could survive with light screen. Honestly, wasn't sure, depending on the item. Um, but, like, the main thing I'd say is this team... Annihilate is such a critical component to it uh, because it normally wants to stay on the field for like a billion turns and yep. then your opponent just like one made a really great play on turn one um, 
and it's tough right because i think about like okay how could you have countered that potentially on turn one like yeah maybe you could consider protect and then like one of light screen to reflect but what was tricky is they had two pokemon that threatened your um grim snarl right and it's like either a Moonblast could maybe ko you or a population bomb could ko you and without knowing the items it's, it's kind of tricky so yeah. i don't know loss like that i wouldn't feel too bad about especially because it's like one opponent played really really well two what do we do like what could we have done better well maybe protected annihilate better but um they just had a lot of good offensive pressure with that gardevoir um household lead and also gardevoir is a pokemon where it's hard to fully expect what uh, item like it could have um so like corviknight as a lead could have been interesting actually into that team composition but like there are plenty of reasons to not lead corviknight in that matchup True. namely like the road and wash that they had on their team yeah the best case scenario would have been me swapping uh, annihilate into corviknight but i mean that's still super risky like i would be like, basically that's like two reads in a row oh, i feel like connect that's two reads in a row i'd have to like expect them to read me to terra and then switch into the into the rocky helmet it would have been i don't know that was that one's fine it was a, it was a wash We're learning experience but we learned basically that that team was scary for my team <laughs> yeah no i mean like you know that's how vgc can be especially in best of one like you can just lose games you know on, on a critical turn especially when your most po important pokemon goes down um and like the reason i wouldn't feel too bad especially about turn one is because your opponent like found a really good play i think a lot of players would be inclined to target the grim snarl there and if we just get drain punch up on turn one completely different yeah, game true okay so this is a team comp i feel like i've seen this is interesting right because you could see indeedy um plus the armor rouge but then there's also like the the ice combo in the back with the belly drum potential to titan and then like aurora veil hmm. but then they have an yeah, so, of their own yeah so this is actually a team that like won um pretty big like online tournament and so it's like assault vest slush rush water uh terra to titan and then yeah like safety goggles armor rouge poison life orb hydreigon um with life orb or sorry yeah. with tailwind and bulk up uh Nihilip as well i feel like i've played against this before but it all comes down to i i like I like Grimmsnarl Ape because mm -hmm. if they go Ape of their own, I mean, I just get the advantage with a Water Terror plus a Reflect. Mm -hmm. But then if, I like they go, if they go in DD, then I can honestly just try to get a bulk up turn one and I light screen against the the Armor Rouge. But then it's like, mm -hmm. then what do I bring in the back? So Gengar could potentially be useful for something like mm -hmm. the Abomas. Now I think I'll probably bring Gengar. And then is Rotom useful here? Not really. This thing could be useful against... Mm, I don't know. This is tough. I think I'll probably go Corviknight. Do we go? The yeah, same? I think you. I think you could go Corviknight or Rotom here. Mainly, Rotom is interesting because it actually does have Terra Blast with Fire, so you could use that as an Obama Snow answer. But I don't think you need it really. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna just go with the Terra Water. Yeah, on and, and like Cor Corviknight's pretty nice into Titan as well. Honestly, like they can't do that much to you, um, and you pressure with super effective Iron Head into them. True. Okay, but it all comes down to lead here. I feel like I feel like Ape is relatively safe regardless, unless it's. Uh, unless it's a Bomba Snow, it's a Titan lead, because then I can't really water to Okay, we got High Dragon. It's a Titan, okay. Shiny's a Titan looking sick. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I always expect Water Terror from the Titan. Yep. Um, and I, I, I can try to maybe bait the Dark move into Ape. So, actually, Ape has a really good Terra here. So, I think it's, it, it comes up to do I want to reflect or do I light screen? I probably. I feel like I probably light screen. I don't know. Yeah, I, I feel like I agree with Titan that. is going to go for some whatever high school crash or whatever those things do. Do I bulk up is the question there. I could probably try to get a drain punch. The bulk up might be a little risky, but it could pay off. What do you think? I, I honestly like both here. I think, uh, yeah. There's there's a lot of options you could go for on turn one. Um, going bulk the up, thing boy. is, they're. Yeah, because they're Poison Fairy Hydreigon. I could even see them going Poison Fairy Terra and then like Terra Blast Grim Snarl, because that's what I would do in their position oh, right true. now. So if they do that, then it's like, okay, well, we get the bulk up off and we have light screen. Annihilate is already looking pretty solid. That looks like a terror from their end, so I expect yeah, it to be a... the Hydreigon. Oh, no. Yep. Well, at least I'll guarantee get a screen up, so it's poison. Okay, so yeah, we see uh, poison terror blast into me, probably. Yeah, exactly. Dude, it just adds such another level with the freaking the terrors. <laughs> it really does, yeah. It's that's that's like best of one especially is really crazy. Um and like the only reason I knew that is because I had seen their team before, right? And and yeah, yeah, like when you have no knowledge of your opponent's team, it can get really wild. True. So this puts me in a decent position, right? So I guarantee get a screen up, and then pretty much guarantee bulk up on the ape, and then I just basically drain punch against the titan who's stuck. Ooh, tailwind, actually. Oh, we I take like those. That's better, honestly. That's, yeah, that's great. totally. Yeah, because like we don't really care that much about speed here right now. Ooh, and we survive. Like nice. Nice. Let's go. And that's okay. huge because they just committed their Terra to the Hydreigon. So now the Annihilate, like, you know, Drain Punch, for example, into the Titan slot is relatively safe. True. 
Now it comes down to I probably want to reflect just for sustainability. I like yeah, I think I like a T wave, but I think reflect's probably better option here and then Drain Punch will go last, so even if I do take damage, I just get it all back on the against us a Titan. So Ape is in a great yep. position now with but with screens up and this thing with a bulk up and then Water Terra, like <laughs> you have to specifically have like a crazy grass mon. Okay, Dark Pulse still does do a bit. Please do not flinch me. And then just heavy slam, okay. If oh, I flinch yes. here, I swear. <laughs> Come on here. See? Come on. Fountain Ape, let's go. Nice. Please. Okay, cool. Look at that. Oof. That damage though. So this thing is it's not max attack investment, right? I think it's it's got like kind of an interesting EV spread. It's got like a hundred and something in speed to be able to potentially outspeed like golden goes that aren't max speed or something. I can't remember. That sounds like, correct, yeah. Something like that. Um, so they have Tailwind up for three more turns. I probably... Who do I put in the back here? I feel like they're going to have a bomb snap, but then they would have used it with the Titan. So I think I'd probably go Corviknight. Yeah, I, that's what I would pick here. I, I think mainly because like Corviknight's a little bulkier, right? So you can use it to sustain um, for a bit. Whereas True. the Gengar like will... Yeah, won't stick around for as long. So... This, this is interesting because, like, a Bombastone right now, of course, is a little bit scary with the um, pressure of grass type attack uh, or damage onto you. Um, but we actually have Tailwind on our own Corviknight here. Yeah, do I want to set up a Tailwind? Or do I, like, just a Brave Bird damage onto that Abomasnow? High Dragon's not really that much of a threat right now, but... Exactly. I think I might even Tailwind and Protect? Exactly, yeah. That, like, that's the play I was kind of, you know, trying to hint at because I think, like, in doing so, the, with... Um, both Annihilip and Corviknight being somewhat speedy, if we survive the turn, which we should, then we could double up onto Abomasnow next turn. True. That's perfect. Okay, so he does Dark Pulse into Ape. Yeah, I imagine Beautiful. they just double Ape here, to be honest. They probably Energy Ball. Yep, Energy Ball Beautiful. Dark Pulse. Nice. And, like, the theory gold. here basically is, like, okay, you know, we have Light Screen up. They do actually have two fairly strong attackers set up, but Hydreigon's Dark Pulse isn't that scary, right? It's the combination. Um, yeah. And now we know, hey, we, we, we match their Tailwind, so we can just outpace them, right? Or, or at least, like, match Obama Snow and thus hopefully just outpace them and, and KO them here. True. Only thing I'm worried about, do I want to maybe go for Iron Head against the Dragon? Or, because the Drain Punch will probably kill Obama Snow, right? Uh, there's two things here. I think one, it's Focus Sash, and two, the Snow is up, so they get the oh, defense boost. True. So I would double up into Obama Snow. Like, yeah. even if they protect here, that's fine. Just because, um, yeah, it, our, main, our main bread and butter being the Annihilate. We basically just have to protect this thing at all costs. So. Exactly, exactly. And we just double into that just in case. Okay, as long as we don't get flinched here. <laughs> yeah, flinch could be bad. So once again. And you probably just jinxed it. Thanks, bro. <laughs> it's okay. We'll flinch them with Iron Head. That's also a possibility. <laughs> Let's go. No oh, flinch. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah, right, so, so I think like what was really important in this interaction was one covering for Focus Sash Obama Snow. That's a really common item on it. I, I think like it's tempting to be like, oh, I can just Brave Bird or Iron Head Obama Snow. That works in the short term, right? But then an Eyelid commits its protect, and then the next turn you're kind of in a tricky position. True. Yeah, that's one thing I struggle with also is trying to figure out which items things are running. You know. Mm -hmm. Things. Be yeah, that's it's. Here. In best of one in VGC, it's really hard, honestly. Like, there's no guarantee you'll ever be able to guess it correctly. Yeah, best um, of one gets gets interesting. Yeah, totally. Okay, so now I feel like Ape is pretty well set up here. I mean, Dragon's not that big of a threat. We could just, I probably just Iron Head to not get recoil damage against Ndidi, and then even just Drain Punch into that slot because then. What, what, do, we, what do we have in the back? What's I the have last Gengar Pokemon again? In the back. Okay, cool. Yeah, so I think I'm gonna Iron Head Ndidi. Mm -hmm. Gengar does not have like uh, anything much for Gengar. Dragon does this Shadow Ball, but we're Sash anyway, so we're pretty much we're pretty much solid. Two guaranteeing two attacks. Oh, helping hand. Two attacks from Gengar is insane. Like yeah, with that exactly. Sash, so much power. Okay, so that doesn't do a lot, but we do have the Tailwind. Drain Punch does not quite kill. Now we get a Helping Hand, Dark Pulse into Ape, but I'm at full health, so. Yeah, we're very well positioned right now. Oh, and they actually target Corviknight. Okay, we should survive that. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah, I think that turn was interesting. There's like a, you could consider like taunting NDD and then like drain punching Hydreigon, but I, we were pretty well positioned where I think most plays would have worked, honestly. True. Okay, so I've taken what, two attacks on? The Rage Fist is looking pretty nice against High Dragon. I probably just, uh, so Iron Head kills NDD, Rage Fist, that boy over there. So I'm honestly happy that this thing was, I guess, what are the, the most common Terras on High Dragon are what? Like I've seen Steel. Um, mm -hmm. poison. Steel, poison, fire feel like the kind of more dominant ones right yeah, now. Fire would have been nice, but 
I think we're still pretty solid here. Iron Head kills that thing. And yeah, with Gengar on the back, there's not much that could go wrong. So it's really important that I think that their win condition was probably a bomb of snow into the ape. And that protect play was probably what kind of gave us the match with that tailwind in the back, just because, like you said, a dark pulse plus uh, an energy ball into that slot. I mean, apes down, and that's kind of like the team is broken up a little bit. But let's exactly, go. Yeah. We did it to him. <laughs> and that's like the lesson we learned from the first game, right? But once again, I wouldn't feel bad about how turn one of the first game played out because one, your opponent made an incredible play. Sometimes that happens, right? You're, you're just going to, your opponents are going to make like really, really good plays. Um, and two, wishes. like, in my opinion, in game one, there wasn't like a very clear turn one that like would always give you a net positive because they had a really strong lead and both Pokemon, like Gardevoir and Mousehold threaten the Grim Snarl. And then, yeah, they have good pressure onto Annihilate as well. So that, you know, yeah, some, sometimes you get outplayed, sometimes you get outled. That's just how Pokemon is. Um, but we learned a good key lesson from that in this game. We were able to like protect the Annihilate better and uh, it secured us the victory. Yes, sir. I just got to say, this is crazy because it feels like I'm inside of a Cybertron video. <laughs> it's, <wild. laughs> it's like an interactive freaking experience. All right, let's go. <laughs> that was a fun one. I like that one a lot. Yeah, 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 that one was great, I feel like. Um, good control from the start. I think it helped that they clicked Tailwind on turn one. Rather, I was surprised they didn't Terror Blast Grim Snarl because it meant like we could get both screens up. Um, True. And I didn't think they needed to set up Tailwind immediately. So I think, yeah, that, that gave us a little bit of an advantage. True. This man's name is Numbers, and for some reason that's oh. frightening. Let's see here. <laughs> 830. So I have seen Dreadnought teams with the Drizzle, and that's fine for Annihilate if I just go water. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. That's what I mean with this team. I feel like the main, I mean, unless there's something that specifically doesn't work well for Ape, like, I don't know what else I would lead with. To be honest, Grimmsnarl Ape still looks pretty solid, because I imagine they, they're going to go something like maybe even like Meow um, mm -hmm. to get that dark advantage. I don't know. I think I'd probably just, just lead with the boys, huh? This two yeah, I think lads. this is an example of a lead that's so consistent you can bring it in most games. Like, I think the one thing that could be scary is fake out Toxic Croak plus something that just eliminates Grim immediately. Like, True. you know, Toxic Croak Golden Go, for example, or Toxic Croak Meowskarada. But those are like very specific leads. I didn't go with that. Because if but, they do lead that, I'll bring Corviknight in the back, switch out Grim into a potential fake out from. Like that? Yep. And then in the back, I like. Well, see, I'm worried a little bit about um, the. Amoongus, but hmm. I guess I yeah, Corbinite just... will be helpful against it. We've got the Lumberry as well. Yeah, this one's interesting. I think like Gengar or Rotom honestly are fine. E even Garchomp's interesting, but I'm less inclined for it here. Um, mainly because yeah. of fear of like. I'm gonna go Gengar, yeah. I think. Okay, I like that. Yeah, I mean. The reason I like Gengar here is it's uh, Focus Sash always just, like you said, it, it ensures multiple hits. Um, having Shadow Ball for Golden Go in itself is really nice. Um, this is one of those team previews that I feel like you could make a good argument for all of, you know, the remaining three Pokemon. True. And sometimes you kind of just have to, you know, pick what you feel the best. That's where uh, it gets tricky because you could definitely make the wrong play. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so we're going to see, I okay, guess so they do go Toxic Rogue Masquerada. So I'm thinking I switch Grim into Corviknight. And Love that. I almost don't want to Terra because we don't want to go water. Well, it's actually... Ape's in a tough position to get to Masquerada because it could just flower if I water, but then it could just knock off. It goes flower trick if I if I go water. I might even just not. Because hmm. I probably, I leave at least one attack in this thing. I think it I maybe just go straight for a Drain Punch without a Terra. Um, yeah, I think you could either consider Drain Punch or Protect. Um, I think either would work here. True. Protect is I'll kind of protect. a little safer. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because nice like Corviknight is going to be so well positioned going into the next turn. I think like you can greed Drain Punch, but what I get scared of is that they just like fake out plus um, Flower Trick the Annihilate immediately and we take like a lot of unnecessary damage. Yeah. Like Whereas like the worst they could do here is maybe knock off into the Grim Snarl slot. Beautiful. Sure, so they do fake out into the Corviknight. Take that Rocky yep. Helmet, boy. Perfect. Which Again, is nice, have... honestly, because breaking uh, sashes. Oh, nice. yeah, that's why we protect. <laughs> wow, they play rough. Okay, did, 10 out of 10 did not expect. I haven't even seen play rough from there. Actually, wait, no, I'm just kidding. That's a lie I have. But I feel like it's not as common. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, now Corlinite is in a great position against both of these lads. Um, mm -hmm. I might even just double Meowskarada and then Terra Water Drain Punch into it just to ensure. Because Meowskarada is the scariest thing for our ape right now, right? Yeah, I think there's like you could consider like Tailwind Terra bulk up this turn as well. Um, yeah. So like we don't get that much out of this turn, but because we're pretty well positioned, they don't threaten the us with much turn. damage. Yeah, and like mm -hmm. they can't change like their that. typing with Meowskarada because of the Protean nerf. True. 
I like that a lot. I think, yeah. So, Tailwind plus Bulk Up, because he likely just goes for another fairy move into the ape. And then next exactly. turn, then I'm positioned faster on both. So, yeah, I think exactly. that's Exactly. It's like now now you've set up. Okay, yeah, perfect. Like, nice. we, we don't need to go on the offensive right now. And the reason for that is because it's like, okay, what are they really threatening us in terms of damage right now? It's not that scary. And after a bulk up, like, their team is... Pr oh. Oh, wait, are they going to... No, sorry, I Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> at first I was like, wait, what, what are they doing? What is going on? <laughs> yeah, you probably don't know what my character looks like, so you're like, yeah, yeah. who is that? <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, An Anilip is looking really solid right now. Um, Unless they go for the flower trick raid here. It's just U-turn. Okay, this is great. Okay, cool. Perfect. So that's solid. Good thing I didn't attack there, because both switch is fine. Okay, so you probably go, they probably go Pelipper with this thing, but now it comes down to weird speed tiers. Do I outspeed with uh, Dreadnought, the rain, after a Tailwind? I don't... It I don't so. yeah it depends on I think how invested their dreadnought is but honestly this is this is still fine right like we get tailwind up we get a free bulk up off um and we're water terra so we don't have to worry about taking as much damage from their end so yeah. was a little bit scary yeah normally when I see play rough I actually assume choice ban so I was kind of surprised they weren't banded there but this sure. turn works out great yeah so this actually is still in a great position because they have nothing to really touch ape now exactly um, other than that yes you're out in the back but another thing Mouskrat is scary because it can just crit through boost which I always forget about. Um, yes, exactly. So now, Pelipper is an interesting mod because I don't, I, I can never remember what this thing's gonna do other than just set up the rain. Like it has hydro pumps and hurricanes, but yeah, um, I'd, I'd say the main thing is that it can also tailwind. So since we have taunt here, it, it could be worth going for taunt um, to essentially prevent a tailwind. Even if dreadnought's faster, that doesn't really scare me very much right now. We'll essentially have the speed advantage against everything else that's not dreadnought. And I yeah, love the drain punch. Yeah, here. I think I drain punch into that thing. Um, yeah, oh, so and they did not Terra. Nice. Okay, this oh, is nice. really good. Okay, so the taunt's good there because the damage that I would have gotten wouldn't have really been worth it anyway. And then you tell. Oh, oh let's go. Yeah, so the non Terra. I was honestly expecting a Grass Terra from that thing, is what I've seen in the past, but we'll take it. We'll take those. Yeah, okay, they just Hurricane. That's fine. We have Lum, so even if they confuse us, it's okay. Yep. Less than half. I actually Beautiful. found an interaction super helpful literally last night. The Lum have. I was like, <laughs> no, not the confusion and then the Lumber. I was like, yes. Let's go. All right. So that hurricane does do a good bit of damage. So now they go into that thing. I think I probably protect ape this turn because fake out. Love it. Yep. Love um, that idea. And then potentially just brave bird into this, or is I don't know. This this pelican's kind of a pro kind of a problem, right? Because I can only rage fist it. Really, I think I probably brave bird on that thing and then protect. What do you think? Yeah, I think you, I think you could go either way, honestly, with this one. Um, because like one setup is you know protect bringing Pelipper down to like under half and then KO it next turn. But here if we KO, okay, they're gonna tear. Oh, interesting. True. Is it gonna be? So it's gotta be the. Uh... Hawks, Hawks or Crow Terror. Okay. Interesting. What is that fighting? I was like, wait, yeah, it's a fighting Tox. Okay. So... <laughs> I'm so like fighting Terror is not common, so I'm like, what, know, like, what even what is here? That? <laughs> yeah. I Seriously. don't think that helps them. Uh... Yeah, not really, unless it's like close combat into. I mean, yeah, this doesn't really. Yeah, you just dead again. Bye. -bye. Let's go. <laughs> Corviknight's an interesting call because I, I haven't seen many teams run Corviknight, but it really is super useful, especially with that that tailwind. It's not fast tailwind, but like with you pair that with protect and annihilate, it it really it can put you in a great situation. I like Corviknight a lot. Surf. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I also completely agree with your point. I think like that's one of the reasons I like this team a lot. It uses a like Corviknight. In itself already not common and the Corviknight's kind of unconventional when people used Corviknight in like Sword and Shield it was often like Iron Defense, Body Press, Roost but this is like I think Jolly, Max Speed and actually very hyper offensive. True yeah the, the yeah generally you see this thing you're expecting the Body Press shenanigans but exactly yeah okay so um who do we have in the point, back again at this point we've, uh, we've got the Gengar in the back I like to have that little safe place nice. and we have Grimmsnarl too we're, we're in great <laughs> we're doing solid yeah we're in good shape yeah um I probably just Iron Head, Mascarada, or Brave Bird, Mascarada, but he's gonna go uh, dark probably anyway. And then no wait, this is interesting, right? So I could, I'm, I think I'm gonna Brave Bird, Pelipper, mm -hmm. and then Drain Punch yep. Mascarada. Love that. Yeah, that's exactly what I would do. Very it nice. covers for most options. Like we, okay, they actually just end up forfeiting. Like, yeah, the reason I like that play is because like. We, first of all, it's interesting. For Meowskarado, we already saw play rough and U-turn, right? And so it's likely going to be knockoff and flower trick as the last two moves. So we had Tailwind up still, I believe. And 
at that point, like, they can't change their typing in, right before we move, and so Drain Punch there should just be a guaranteed KO, unless they drop one of those, you know, two common attacks, which would be kind of weird. And we saw that the um, Pelipper was doing less than 50% to us from Hurricane, so even if Meowth had a Rogue Protect, for example, uh, and they He's were able to get a Hurricane onto us, Brave Bird on a Pelipper does a lot of damage, and we might actually faint from Recoils, which is beneficial for us, because then we get a free switch in into Gengar or the Grim Snarl. Yep, yeah, so either way, we were really well positioned there. Exactly, yeah. Nice. All right, so this guy's got the Orthworm, which is sick. Yeah, this is uh, this is a team that Wolf actually built, um, and oh, it's like Choice Band. Team? Yeah, it's Choice Band on the um, Garchomp, I believe, like Focus Sash, Tailwind, Kukwebel, um and yeah, Shed Tail, you know, to often like set up the Kukwebel, and yep. the Kukwebel can just like Aqua Step uh, away, and it's Flying Terror, I believe. Oh, okay, well, Ape still does great against, <laughs> great against, if, if the Kukwebel's the kind of their main thing. I mm -hmm. feel like we're pretty decent to it's like I want to choose a different lead, but like if it ain't broke, don't don't fix it. I, I guess <laughs> these guys are do the ape like I mean they could go lead with the kilowatt drop, but then that thing's probably just tailwind support, right? Uh it actually does pretty meaningful damage with air slash to ape, which can be a little bit scary. So like no, true. We could consider something like Grimstar Rotom, for example, in the early game, because Rotom at least matches up fairly better in a Kilowatt roll, like set up our screens and then bring Ape out later on. I, like I think that. that's, I like it. yeah, one direction to go with. No, um, it comes down to, I almost like, yeah, I was going to say, I like Chomp against, yeah, Earthworm literally eats that Earthquake. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's also unfortunate Gengar doesn't levitate anymore, because he can pair what nicely with that, but mm -hmm. let's see, probably just Gengar in the back for potential Sylveon, I'm thinking, I don't know, last yeah, second. I love that. Going forward. Yeah, I think, like, Gengar offensively here, like Shadow Ball and Sludge Bomb, two shots almost everything. And so just having it for, yeah, late game is nice. Sure. Uh, it also actually does have Haze. And so like the Kukwebel on the opposing team likes to snowball pretty quickly between Moxie and Aqua Step. And so if it gets to that point, maybe we can get Gengar out, set up or use Haze, get rid of a uh, potential boost that they have. Yeah, because yeah, we got Aqua Step for speed boost and then Moxie for attack. It's like it's a free Dragon Dance if it KOs something. Exactly, yeah. All right, so we see Sylveon kilowatt drill so i definitely i'm thinking i mean when i see sylveon i think throat spray hyper voice mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. i don't know if that's what that thing does i'm probably just gonna light screen here and then like do that we, do we want damage into the watch roll i could even what's the ter this thing's terra fire we probably don't need that yeah i'm scared to click hydro pump anytime <laughs> like, i i like what you're going for here yeah i think I probably, the light screen t bulk into kill watch is good yeah yeah okay because sylveon's not super scary with gengar in the back um, Precisely. And like one thing to think about, so it's fire Terra Sylveon, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. They're going for a flinch, I guess. Hmm. No! <laughs> Dude. Oh my gosh. The play. It's wow. a little cheeky. That's fine. It's okay. fine. Um, that, that is pretty annoying, though, because it's like yeah. we, our, our payoff there would have been pretty huge. Like yeah, that's breaking like the one stash situation on the roll. Like... Yeah, yeah, but um, whatever. Okay, so now, now Grim Snarl is kind of in a weird spot where it's like, do I even conserve i probably don't um i kind of just have to i mean i could reflect for just to have that up and dig that in the back but or do i t-wave i like reflect here yeah i think because kukwevo guard jump in the back are a lot of um like they yeah. both provide a lot of offense it's a little scary yeah plus with that light clay eight turns is so long in vgc it's, it's crazy insane. yeah exactly pretty much there for like the game like <laughs> super nice so now we just see, okay, now he bolts into the washing machine, which I live, but then citrus berry, let's go. Puts me at half, and then we were faster than Sylveon right now, so okay. Yep. Guaranteed he bolts into that thing. Now the thing's in range for our, for pretty much anything. Rotom lives, okay. So now what's weird is, do I go Gengar, outspeed kilowatt roll, or Outspeed Killer Rodgel and in, in focus that thing down. I feel like Rotom is probably not super useful now. Uh, Kilo space speed is higher than Gengar's, I think, right? And I think oh, it's actually, max speed Kilo. Oh, yeah, okay. so yeah, I, I like how you're thinking about it, but I think because they should be faster, it gets a little scarier. True. Um, I probably one interesting Gengar, angle we could do is... Well, I was thinking we could go Ape because it's uh, Fire Terror, right? Or sorry, or, Water yeah, Terror. Water, so we, actually, we, yeah. like, we set totally up Light right. Screen we, and we could just like Terra here immediately. Um, Doing because kilowatt is the scariest thing for the water component of, of you know the team yeah very true okay so yeah then we we get the guaranteed kind of hyper voice rotom goes first if he i'm thinking he probably air slash i, I feel like they probably go into the annihilate slot here it's like air slash and then hyper voice mm -hmm. do i even yeah. want to bulk up is the question i would get rid of kilowatt through here because by committing our terra then they could thunderbolt us next turn which scares me a good yeah. amount so i probably just rage fist watch roll yeah 
And then I could even protect this thing, but that doesn't provide us too much value. I like I like the protect here. I think it's good. Yeah, because yeah, even cause... if I don't, it, the, the, value, the damage I get on anything else isn't really too meaningful. So. Yep. Let's oh, see. and then it, so so this is interesting. I think if they. Um, oh, okay, wait. It's just I always think it's our opponent terror. <laughs> I know, so you said like my player character, and I'm like, oh, wait, it's not <laughs> mine. <laughs> I should have made my guy look like yours with the helmet. <laughs> Right, so protect here if they want to just focus washing machine that would be ideal i'm thinking probably air slash hyper voice into oh just tailwind okay yeah that, that's a good plan there and because like tailwind plus hyper voice is super safe from them yeah yep okay, okay because now i just wonder what they have in the back of the ah, it's pretty good damage yeah, that's, that's scary lot. dang and that thing isn't even i wonder what item that sylveon even is is it specs no that's that can't be it that's used to, i think uh throat spray activated after the first hyper oh voice. sorry okay yeah that. yeah it's it's just a little frustrating um the what was i gonna say that the flinch on turn one because it was like we should have basically ko'd um the kilowattro one turn earlier uh true it's also really cheeky to just go for yeah that kind of flinch. i know the air slash just <laughs> guaranteed, like trying to go for the flinch unless they expected me yeah to like tear to it into something weak to flip yeah it. yeah it was it was surprising because i think tailwind from there and is always really safe on turn one so it's like we could have punished them um yeah. but yeah it's fine you know that's part of the game and um like the most important thing is to just like not tilt out of oblivion after a start like that <laughs> true uh, okay so this thing comes in that does it have anything if they double into ape slot do i die I <sighs> it's do. scary we have screens but it's life or quaquaval um yeah. they have terra blast flying it's close, but Sylveon did just a little bit too much damage for me to feel comfortable, but yeah. it's tough because there's not really a clear, like, counterplay option either, yeah, given that they set up Tailwind. Yeah, because that Hyper Voice just knocks out Washing Machine anyway. I think I just have to probably just see what the damage output is here, Drain Punch into this thing, and I guess probably just double into that. I mean, Sylveon I'm not super worried about just because of Gengar in the back, but... Yeah, I think that's fine. Let's see. We probably get outplayed here. Close combat of that. Yeah, that's going to do it a lot. Plus, <sighs> it's too much, yeah. Hyper voice. That's, that's game. Damn. Hate to see it. This, this one was tricky, though, honestly. I, I think, one, like, it's not exactly the easiest matchup. The flinch made things way harder for us because, yeah, it allowed them an extra turn. Um, I think, like, one interesting adjustment if we were playing our opponent again, given their tendency to lead Kilowatch on Sylveon, is, like, actually lead Corviknight. Um... Because Corviknight's... Oh, no, no, no. The, the Corviknight here is Steel Terra. Or, sorry, Flying Terra. So that doesn't actually help yeah. against Kilowattro. Yeah, like, Kilowattro is actually a huge pain for us here because we essentially can't deny them the speed control. Um, yeah, because if, if it's Steel Terra, Corviknight, that would have been solid because then we bait T-Bolt into that thing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Underway from Grimstar, actually... Yeah, I, I know it's a play you mentioned earlier that actually may have benefited because the Sylveon here was actually really hard to break through. Um, yeah. And it's like... It's interesting, right? It's like Sylveon, you, you kind of want to check. You've got Corviknight and Gengar for it, but then Kilowattro is actually really solid against the majority of the team here. So it's not super easy to break through. I wish we could have seen how it would have played out without the um, the flinch on turn one, because I thought it was fairly critical. Um, but yeah, they, they found a good lead. I think Sylveon plus the um, Kilowattro was yeah a very good lead from them. Yeah, that was just, that was just a good, uh, good, good, good lead matchup for sure. And he just yawns. Interesting. I mean, I should have just clicked run there, but it's fine. Now you get the sledge bomb <laughs> you, and it doesn't kill. Right, that's fine. <laughs> All right, so that's that game. That's okay. Good intel. Good intel. The, the air slash turn one, very weird against an electric type, just literally trying to get the flinch, which, of course, happens every damn time. But. Yeah, I think... Um... You know, when I, when I when I lose a game like this, right, I, like, look back and be like, okay, well, where could we have improved? First of all, I think, like, both in the first game and in this game, like, the lead maybe didn't feel, like, incredible, right? Like, it felt like, uh, um, like, I, I wanted to lead Rotom in this one to counter the, the Kilowatt rule, um, which would work if we didn't get flinched. <laughs> um, but I think, like, another interesting consideration if we think they were going to go Kilowatt rule plus Sylveon is, like, actually play towards Gengar, because it is Fire Terra Gengar, so, like, it can wall the Sylveon, but... It's annoying because the Sylveon has yawn, so we can't actually set up very easily with Gengar's, uh, or sorry, Garchomp's. I, I said Gengar, I was trying to say Garchomp. Um, yeah. It's not mm -hmm. very easy to just set up with Sword Stance with Garchomp because then they can just yawn us and we can't KO them very easily. And because it's Fire Terra on the road, um, the Sylveon as well, even if we were to lead Gengar or Corviknight, like, we can't really necessarily one-shot it, and then they could fire a Terra as well. So, True. like, Kill Watcher and Sylveon was actually just really hard to break through in general. And yeah, we definitely yeah. have answers for it, but it's, like, tough when you're trying to cover for all of your opponent's lead. Exactly. And then, yeah, like that, that one lead you, you maybe don't want to fully see comes out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the yawn on Sylveon's interesting. I didn't even realize that that thing yawns, but it makes sense. 
Yeah, exactly. I think the main thing is like it's impossible to actually deny Tailwind in this matchup because Kilowatcher is faster than our entire side, and we don't have something like Fake Out. The only speed control we have is like Thunder Wave from Grimace Gnarl, but even then, like we can't paralyze Kilowatcher. So essentially, they're almost always guaranteed Tailwind, which makes things trickier. And so, yeah, like I think one approach in this game could be hard focus Kilowatcher, right? Um, like try to knock it out in the first two turn or two of the game, uh, because then Corviknight actually walls a lot of the opposing team. Like. The tricky thing is it's fire Terra Sylveon, so if they actually just held their Terra, then they could just Terra, and then, yeah, like, Terra Blast actually still does sizable damage to Corviknight. So yeah. all of this is to say, even with the perfect game plan, it's still not an easy matchup, and that's how Pokemon is going to be sometimes. Yeah, that's, that's how it is. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got here. Okay. Whoa, so... Miss Magius. I actually have not fought against that at all. Wow. Yeah, that thing is a beast in singles, but I didn't know <laughs> what it's going to do here. <laughs> uh, let's see. So... How does it, the thing, the main thing I look at first is like, how does ape, ape, ape do from the start? Now there's of mm -hmm. course got the tell, which is arena trap or whatever, which is weird, but trick room. Yeah. Uh, shadow tag. Yeah, exactly. Shadow tag, yeah. Hmm. They've got a Grimmsnarl of their own, which is scary. Um, I almost want to bring Rotom just for a zoom roll, but we probably, I think I'm probably going to go with the old, the, the old spooky duo. These like guys look like they could be cousins. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then let's see, then there's, King Gamut is very scary if it is going to be a trick room thing. Hmm. Gengar is not super. Well, actually, Gengar is super useful. Just kidding. Yeah, I like roll. that. Plus, now it comes down to who to bring last. Um, hmm. Volcarona is kind of scary because it could limit what Corvin I could do. Hmm. I haven't brought Garchomp at all, but does that thing, does it look too good here? I think it's decent. Like, I, yeah, I think I would hover Bring between Garchomp and Rotom in this one. So let's give him a shot. We're giving the giving the Chomp a shot. And then at this point, we've used everybody. <laughs> at least once. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I find myself, this Garchomp's weird on this because, yeah, like you said, it doesn't have the Dragon Claw, does it? Yeah, which can feel weird, but in this matchup, like, we don't really need it. Yeah, it's fine uh, in so this, that's why I feel. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think when I think of Garchomp, it's like, okay, is there any opportunity for me to just get Earthquakes off even before Sword Stance? You know, how valuable is that for me? And it's pretty decent in this yeah. one. All right, so we see Snarl and Gambit. So I probably just go for the Reflect here. I expect maybe the Cleave mm -hmm. into an Iolape slot. So like I probably that. want to just go for Terra. And I could even just bulk up here if they're going to go for a screen of their own, which they probably will. I think bulk up seems pretty safe here. Yeah, I think like the main debate is whether or not um, with Terra, I think you generally incline to Terra with Annihilate immediately. And I think like in situations, like we might not necessarily have to reveal it immediately because True. it's not like they have super effective damage onto us right now anyway. Um, so like one of the interesting things, it's still something I'm working on in this uh, metagame or in Scarlet and Violet in general. I think Terra is really hard to use effectively because I often greet it uh, and it feels like, okay, they're gonna go with the fake out route, I see. Interesting, okay. That's smart. So they're probably just gonna iron head that slot as well. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Then damn, down goes. Snarl without any screens up. Oh no, I totally did not even think about Fake Out. Okay, so you actually just cleaved. Is that gonna be- Okay, wait, that's really good for us. <laughs> nice, thank God, okay. So we try to get that Reflect up once more. Yeah, Iron Head, he probably sets up Reflect with his now, and I think I just Drain mm -hmm. Punch for sustain against this guy, unless Love he Terra's. But yeah, like you were saying, I'm often inclined with this team to just Terra turn one, but like you said, I didn't really even need it there. So it's like, I could have kept it in the back pocket if needed later. But yeah, that's yeah. definitely something it I need to work on for sure. Uh, well, I would say, like, it's it's not like you're completely unjustified, right? Because, like, Grimstar does have Spirit Break, and so if they're offensive and they actually attack us, like, it's pretty risky because they could activate Defiant, obviously, yeah. but it's not something that's, like, completely, yeah, uh, out of pocket. So, if anything, your play is still the safer option, for sure. True. Okay. So, he actually... Ooh, parting Shot. Okay. Oh, that is not the right play for them. That activates Defiant. Yep. That is, <laughs> that is an L. Wow. Uh, uh, uh... Yeah, they're probably like, it activates Oops. twice. <laughs> Okay, so Ape is about to go absolutely ape shit, and we're yeah, literally <laughs> pretty good here. <laughs> and even Drain Punch now into that Azumarill slot is scary because I get all my health back. And now, yep, we're at uh, we even wow. Okay, well that <laughs> in their head probably was like, okay, this seems like a good play, but then people forgetting about Defiant on the absolute goat. You hate and love to see it. We love to see it in our situation. So okay, totally. Um, what does Gothitelle generally do for offense? Is it 
Even so this duel actually is like normally perish song. So I wouldn't be surprised oh. if they click fake out onto the annihilate right now and then try to perish song with the zoom reel. Oh. Um, so no bunch of approaches. Yeah, you could. I like the thunder wave because it's like I think if thunder wave goes off and they try to perish song, they actually just lose the game here immediately. True. So I think that's smart. But then again, I guess what do I click against the zoom? Or probably just rage fist. But I don't have. I have like one boost on it. Still probably better than drain punch, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, especially you're at plus five attack at this point, I think. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess actually just fake out into it. See, I, I forget that even Gothitelle gets fake out. These are things that I need to learn because Gothitelle mm -hmm. never... I, I don't I have a lot of experience against freaking VGC Gothitelles. Um, does he... He does Perish Song. Yeah, there's Perish. So we now have a timer of three turns, and he has the Grim Snarl in the back. So do we even consider switching out here? Because they probably are... We can't, we can't switch because of uh, oh, Gothitelle. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We are, okay, that's exactly why it's just Paris Trap. This is definitely something I have not gone up against. Okay. So the Paris where there would have been super nice. Uh, yeah, now, exactly. That's, that's why it's worth to go for it because if they just get Paris, they kind of just lose. I would say immediately. Yeah. What item would Goth the Tell even be? Is this thing Sash? Sash or a recovery item, like a recovery yeah. berry generally. I would say. Now Grimstone is kind of in a weird spot. Do I even? Do I just go for this just to cover for a Sash maybe? Yeah, I think they're likely going to double protect here. It's interesting. Like, you could make the read let Goth protects and try to fish for the para on Azumarill, for example. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I just try to go fish for that uh, para. Hmm. Actually, oh. ends up switching. Okay. Back into... Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, they're going to bring out Gr So, yeah, this is actually really interesting. Essentially, they're, like, fake out cycling, right? Like, Goth will probably protect this turn. Yep. Yeah, yeah the Spirit um, Break would have been nice in the Grim slot. Yeah. But this is but still it's fine. Much this does. pretty big boost on that. Ooh, oh! dude, a kill. I, I actually think so if nice. we get that KO, oh, okay, it's a jack button. That's oh. cool. Wow, dude, there's so much going on here. I'm, I am. There is, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is crazy. I, I actually think that a jack button works against them though, because yeah, because they can't get the fake out, right? Yeah. So, so now the got the tell slot is just left exposed. Yeah, a jack button is a very strange item where I feel like it's like. Half the time it works against you. <laughs> like... So so this turn is interesting. I, I think like we really gotta think about this turn because it, I think it's very likely they actually switch Gothitelle out back in a Grim Snarl, hoping for you to KO the Grim Snarl. Mm. Um True. Which huh? is it, like a debate of do we want to actually target that slot, uh, or do we like do we think they're gonna switch out essentially? Because if I were them, I actually would switch out so we could intentionally like not KO Gothitelle I feel like and go for like the rage fits onto the Azumarill slot, for example. I think that's what I'll do. I honestly feel like the way they've been playing, right? They're probably gonna switch that. And now we rage switch yeah. so rage into this thing. A pair on a protect on Azumarill would be ideal. Um it's well, one of those where it's like if they end up staying with Gothitelle, the then it's like, damn, like we could have just gone for Rage Fist onto it. But it, I think the proper way to play it here is to switch oh, it. But, switch oh, switch is a Zoomerol. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I'm honestly really surprised about that. Wow. Okay, so what? Well, we've got. Oh, oh, this is why. They have a defensive Terra. It's probably like, I wouldn't be surprised to see it being dark, for yeah, example. Yeah, I was going to say dark, probably, huh? Let's see. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so a Drain Punch there would have been lit, but. No way to expect that. That's fine. Yeah, it's it's funny. I like just use like Parish um, for a video, and it's tough because it's like hard to cover all of your options, you know. But yeah. I like the reason why I think it's still fine is because like they still need to win the game, right? Like even if they get these two KOs, where are they gonna go from there? Exactly. That's exactly question. what I was just thinking about. So yeah, Spirit Break is actually nice now. All right. Oh, it's a lot of damage. Yeah. Some big boy damage. And a special attack drop in there. Ooh, <laughs> interesting. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, we're still super well positioned. I mean, I get Gengar on the back. There's not much. I mean, Paris, it seems like the Paris song will be lasting forever. Three turns goes slow. <laughs> it does, yeah. Especially with, like, you add Terra to the mix. You're like, yeah, what's going on? 100%. Okay. So. What's also interesting is, like, their Gothitelle is still perished right now, right? It's like, so do you just give that up, essentially? True, yeah, because, yeah, they can't... Hmm. So what do they have? So they have uh, the King Gambit in the back, which is frightening. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I probably double a zoomer, maybe? Or do I even, maybe I try to pair, oh no, I can't pair, I can't prankster into the dark type. Mm -hmm. So I probably mm -hmm. just spirit break a zoomer and then rage fist it to try to knock a zoomer out. But is a zoomer even that big of a threat? He might even protect, huh? Yeah, I think you could either Rage Fist that slot or Drain Punch yeah, the God slot. Yeah, I'm which, Drain Punch the God. If they, like, switch into King Gambit, we'd punish. Yes, oh, and that wins go. us the game. 
There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's the game right there. The King Gambit was yeah. very scary in the back because this thing's still full. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because he switches out there so he doesn't lose that thing to perish. So that was actually, that was probably the right read. I just honestly didn't even do it for the real right reason, but <laughs> it works out. Yeah. It, basically, in this situation, like, we know Gothitelle's going to faint after the turn, right? But if we can cover it for switching out, that's great. I, they could have made a really cool play of switching a Zuber out into King Gambit, then Spirit Break goes into that slot, and then Defiant Ooh. activates, and that gets pretty tricky. Damn, but true. because we have um, Focus Ash Gengar in the back, I was thinking it'd still be okay, you know? Yeah. Like, the, the thing is, they had to give up so many resources just to get these first two KOs. Yeah, it's like almost it's, not it's even not worth it. it. Yeah, <laughs> not exactly. worth it at all. It's a cool strategy with, like, Shadow Tag and Pair Song, and then... But, like, truly, I don't, I don't know if it's really worth it. They could have just gone with something more offensive and dealt with that easier but that is yeah. fine with and, me. And, yeah and the nice thing is with gengar and garchomp in the back like we always had a lot of offense to win this game anyway um especially like one of the values of garchomp in this game in my opinion is how it matches up into king gambit so even if they just sacrifice god to tell the end game would be gengar plus garchomp against azumarill plus king gambit and i think that favors us heavily yeah, but now they can't even too. fake out into the uh the gengar slot right yes sir all right so we sludge bomb azoo and rock slide question mark yeah i like that or, yeah okay i think the only scary thing here is okay no no they, they lose the, the game chomp. off this Rough scale. yeah i was thinking the, the only way they could win is if uh they protected azumarill and got the tower trick room uh, even Ooh, then true. like they would they would need so much yeah like we just have too much offense for them because like that yeah, parahex flint like potential yeah I think them, um, they had the opportunity to KO Grimmsnarl on turn one. I was really surprised to see them, like, split the damage, like, fake out into one slot, iron head into the other slot. But True. I think um, this is a good good game to actually showcase because, yeah, like, Perish Song is something people are using. So if you see Azumarill, you should expect either Belly Drum or Perish Song. Um, and they had Miss Magius on their team. So, you know, one thing I was thinking about is, okay, well, I never see this Pokemon in VGC, but it actually, I believe, gets access to Perish Song. So there's two Perish Song users on the team. True. Um, and so... Often See, that's with something these I teams. didn't even know about. Like, I look at that team matchup, and I don't even think Perish Song, really, because I haven't played yeah. against that at all. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's just something you kind of, like, learn from experience, right? And yeah. games like that always feel great. But it's like, oh, we managed to win, even though, like, maybe you weren't fully expecting it. And now, next time you face it, you'll be even better prepared for it. Yeah, now I know. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, hey, that was super fun. Dude, thank you very much for joining me. I honestly learned more than, like, I've played my 51st game so i appreciate you joining me man it's you, you make things super uh, super easy to understand and that's why you know i always kind of gravitate towards your channel because the way you break things down is just so easy to listen to you talk about stuff so <laughs> go check it's out aaron's pleasure, channel man. this guy's an absolute thank you, legend thank you and if you'd like to learn more about vgc this is the dude for you because he's uploading you upload like daily videos now right i am right now yeah it's been a lot of fun trying out to, i try i try to use a new team every every day right now so it's you know trying to feature as many new strategies during the, the beginning of this new game. Let's go. Super nice. All right, man. Well, thank you guys very much for watching. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. And uh, let me know if you want to see some more VGC stuff because I'm, I'm learning. I'm doing, I'm doing my best. All right. See you guys.